What's the biz, everybody? It's your boy, Vaker Maker, a.k.a. Dinsley, and I'm here to give you some uh, true shit. I've been meaning to, uh, I've been holding off on this video for a long time. It's many months in the making, but here we are. Um, I'm here to t talk about my first true Final Fantasy experience. Strap yourself in, because this is going to be a, a very lengthy video. Probably one of the lengthiest one I've ever done, but, uh, but uh, enough stalling, let's mosey. I'm a huge Kingdom Hearts fan. It might be, be my favorite uh, video game franchise of all time. As, I, as I've gotten older, I've become less of a gamer than I was as a kid. So recent games like The Last of Us never really caught my attention. With that said, I still find myself having fun playing uh, Kingdom Hearts or Dragon Ball games. For years, I've been uh, intrigued by the lore of Final Fantasy VII, despite the fact that I've never actually played the original game. However, I pretty much uh, I pretty much know the whole story of the original game ever since uh, I was first exposed to characters like Cloud and Sephiroth in the Kingdom Hearts games. I've I've always been a, a fan of those characters and became invested in learning their true stories. Sephiroth is a optional uh, boss uh, boss fight in both uh, Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. And it took me three years, three freaking years to beat him in Kingdom Hearts 2, in Cage 2. Y'all, uh, y'all done, done yet? Done laughing yet? Anyway, throughout my years on the internet, I've, been, I've pretty much been full, fully spoiled for the original. But despite that, I, uh, I was t still really excited for this game. I did at some point watch uh, Advent Children, which serves as a sequel to the game, and I didn't I didn't really like it. Though th thought it thought it was boring, and half of the shit that the characters were saying made no sense to me. The the only saving grace was the uh, was the graphics and of course the movie's final fight featuring Cloud versus Sephiroth. That fight was cool. It reminded me of how much of a badass Sephiroth was. Despite me not liking the game, uh, liking the movie, it didn't stop me from wanting to learn more about the Final Fantasy story. I found myself do doing way more research on it, and uh, even watching cutscenes of Crisis Core, which serves as a prequel game to Final Fantasy VII. And I, and I did enjoy that and became became a fan of Zack Fair's uh, character. Now set the time up. I know what I'm doing. That is an opinion you are having. Now set it to 10 minutes. Fine. Oh. Shit. Do not. I can fix this. Do not. I can fix this. Touch it again. <sighs> I remember the day Square had finally revealed that the remake was actually being made and seeing a lot of people being so happy, even some people tearing up about it. Meanwhile, my reaction was, oh, cool, neat. <laughs> yes, even back then, I was aware of how influential the, the original was and how long people had been uh, waiting for the remake to be announced. But you got to understand that at the time this happened, the only video game that I really cared about was Key, uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, a game I waited over a decade for, and at the time, we didn't even know the the release window for. And yeah, I know the Final Fantasy fans have 
have waited even longer than that for this remake to even be a reality. But did, but but again, I wouldn't really consider myself a Final Fantasy fan at the time. That's why the reveal didn't really affect me the same way the reveal for KH3 did uh, did for me uh, back in 20, uh, 2013. Fast forward to 2019, and KH3 had came and gone. I played the I played the game and loved it. Then, after going a long, a long time without hearing nothing involving the FF7 remake, suddenly more trailers and and news for the remake started sporadically showing up. I I watched multiple videos of people giving their thoughts and expe expectations for the remake, and people talking about how how the OG impacted their childhood, and I found myself getting hyped for a video game again. Not now, granted, not at the same level as I was for K3, but still. Again, I never I never played the original uh, FF7 game, but I, I, I uh, but I've watched playthroughs of it. So I pretty much know the entire story, as well as the themes of it. Thanks to watching video game videos, uh, analyzing it, I even watched uh, Final Fantasy VII: Mission Abridged, which is a bridge series created by Team Four Star, and I absolutely love their version of it. In their version, um, they started off making Tifa Lockhart such a bitch, which is a huge contrast to how she is in the original story. But as the series continued. They uh, they managed to make her more uh, make her likable by capturing some some characteristics um, that made her cool in the first place. Now she's my favorite character in the abridged uh, series, along with uh, Sid. Now every time I hear someone nicknamed uh, Cloud Thunderhead, I just chuckle. Now uh, last uh, December, they just finished the story and it was awesome. I'd be curious to see if they e even want to uh, abridge the rest of the um, FF7 compilation like Advent Children. I doubt I, I doubt they would do it, but I think it would be fun to see uh, see happen. You do realize what Marco is, don't you? Marco is the lifeblood of our world. The planet bleeds green like you and me bleed red. The hell you think's gonna happen when it's all gone, huh? Answer me! You gonna stand there and pretend you can't hear the plan crying out in pain? I know you can! You really hear that? Damn straight I do! Get help. <laughs> Say that again! I'd worry less about the planet and more about the next five seconds. Save the screaming for later. Now, last year, I had pre-ordered the, uh, the remake on the PlayStation Store, and then April uh, 10th came around, you know, the uh, official release date for the game, and I immediately started playing it, and I absolutely loved it. The game starts off with a bombing mission throughout the first chapter, Cloud trying to be a, a badass mercer mercenary that doesn't give a crap about, about nothing but money, his banter with Barrett, the music, OMG, the music. The fun scorpion boss fight, and of course, Jesse being thirsty as fuck. Someone give this girl a cup. Speaking of which, uh, speaking of Jesse, I absolutely adored her in the remake and really liked that the devs expanded her role compared to what they did with her in the, uh, in the original game by giving her more screen time and actually giving her a backstory. She became my uh, my third favorite female character in the game. Out of all the girls who are attracted to Cloud, she, she's easily the most flirtatious one. I'm not a video game expert, nor am I uh, an expert of Final Fantasy. Hell, this is the first Final Fantasy game I've ever played. But speaking from from the perspective of someone who enjoys playing video games, 
this game hits all the right notes for me. I know Square's uh, decision to switch the gameplay from a classical turn-based uh, format, which a lot of uh, early FF uh, games, including the original um, FF7 uh, game, used to a more real-time action-based combat, definitely rubbed some uh, OG fans the wrong way. I had no problem with this since I was uh, more more than familiar with the uh, action-based JRPGs being a Kingdom Hearts fan after all. So I was glad that they cho chose this route. I've played uh, turn-based uh, games before, but I personally feel more comfortable with this style of gaming and get more excitement from it. Some people were worried that there would be nothing to offer but uh, button mashing. But trust me, this game forces you to think your way through uh, a lot of your fights, especially the really hard ones. I found myself strategizing on how to fight with each playable character, which material to use, and which, uh, which character in my uh, party to equip a certain uh, material with. Cloud and Tifa are, are useful for close range attacks, while Barrett and Aerith are, are uh, good at uh, good for long range attacks. Aerith was the healer. I often had Bear, uh, Barrett be the one with the with the most defense. Tifa was the fastest, and both her and Cloud be the ones with the most powerful attacks. Similar to KH three, you can always upgrade your weapons so that you don't have to be forced to throw away your favorite weapon in favor for a new weapon with higher stats. Even though I did stick with the Buster Sword for most of the game, I did occasionally switch it out with uh, with the other swords just to test out the, um, the new abilities that come with each sword. One of my favorite uh, favorites being the Hard Edge Sword. I enjoyed using summon, uh, the summons like uh, Shiva and uh, Le Leviathan, but what's even cooler is the fact that you get to battle them as well. I had a lot of fun with a lot of the uh, boss fights. Probably the hardest one for me to beat was the Hell House, and, uh, and of course, performing a limit break like uh, Cloud's uh, Cross Slash or Tifa's Somersault was always satisfying especially if they're uh they're what what ends the boss fight these precursors were already pioneering its use somehow they learned of the great reservoir of energy pulsing oh. their feet oh. and we who are born of the planet with her we speak her flesh we shape Unto her promised land shall we one day return. By her loving grace and providence, the Shiva Electric Power Company is committed to changing and evolving with them. Like the ancients, we've harnessed the power of Mako. Are they out there watching us, waiting for us to join them? The graphics were great. Out of all the games I played, this was the best looking one. Kingdom Hearts 3's graphics were great, blending an anime uh, as aspects with a, a cartoony Disney feel to it, while Final Fantasy 7's took a more realistic route and looked great. Sure, there were some scenes that the texture of characters and backgrounds looked a bit off and seemed like it came from the P uh, the PS1 era, but overall the visuals were beautiful and spot on for the most part. All the character models as well as the 
character designs for this game look so great. So great. Characters like Cloud, Sephiroth, and Tifa look better than they did in Advent Children. And that was a high-budgeted CGI film. Doesn't matter whether you're talking about the real-time graphics or the pre pre-rendered graphics. This game looks incredible. I loved how this game handled the NPCs. They played a big part in making each part of Midgar f feel lively. The conversations they would have were often interesting as they would be re uh, reacting to the events of the ma main story. A lot of the NPCs were either uh, for Shinra or against them. Then you got people who are just caught in uh, in between all of this madness and, and and just trying to live out live out their lives the best they can and at times and at times it makes you the player wonder if what you what uh what your group is doing is the right thing are you guys truly the good guys with that said i know for a fact that shinra isn't but there are some employees who aren't shit bags but unfortunately buying uh buying into the uh propaganda their higher ups are feeding them as well as the rest of the uh, midgar some side quests are, were fun but there were some lame ones like trying to fi find some kids cats Ugh. The OST in this game was the best I've heard in a game with, with the only one coming close as again, KH3. I remember listening to the soundtrack from the original game and felt like that uh, aside from Sephiroth, Sephiroth, Tifa might have the best game song in that game. And after listening to the remake soundtrack, I, I probably would say the same thing for this game. And this game had has multi multiple versions of it for you to enjoy whether it's the one you hear while you get to walk around as Tifa and Aerith in Don Cornero's uh, mansion or, or the one where Tifa shares a very emotional moment with Cloud in one of the later chapters. Although I've never played the OG I did watch the videos of other people playing it so I so I so I do think I have a good idea of how faithful the remake was in terms of uh, story and characters and for the most part I think the devs t totally knocked it out of the park with both the story and the characters I've never felt this this much attachment to these characters like I have before and I'm sure that has a lot to do with the fact that I'm actually playing the game and the characters actually look like people instead of just polygons and instead of just reading text we get to actually we get to uh we get actual voice acting but a big part of it is because of how well the, the, the devs portray these characters by by making them feel like real people and likable emo cloud emo cloud was nowhere in sight. Instead, he was—he was exactly how he's supposed to be: cocky, headstrong, and at times snarky, especially towards Barrett. Although it's not very often, he does show a softer side of himself. But that's mostly when it comes to Tifa or even Eric. He shows—he shows greater signs of psychological trauma than in the uh, original continuity and reacts strongly to, towards Sephiroth's presence with both fear and rage. Are you okay? Yeah. 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 Are you okay?
Beginning of the game, Barrett does come off as a, as a loud mouth hothead who spends too much time preaching about how he wants to save the planet from the evil Shinra Corporation. So I can see how he can be seen as annoying at first, but over time he does grow on you, and you see him, you see, uh, you see, he, he see he's more than just a Mr. T knockoff. Especially the scenes of him and his daughter Marlene are just adorable. Aerith is such a delight. I love the interactions between her and Cloud, especially in Chapter 8 when we're ju just walking and talking with her. I can see why a lot of people love this character. Over the years, I've noticed uh, a, a misconception with, with not just her, but Tifa as well. There's this notion, because of her appearance, that she's just this sweet, innocent, shy flower girl. But let me tell you guys right now, that couldn't be farther from the truth. She is sweet, don't get me wrong, but she's actually quite sassy and flirtatious towards Cloud. She may not be physically strong like Tifa, but she's very confident and courageous. She's shown to be quite a competent uh, mage. Along with being upbeat, carefree, and joyful, she's also compassionate towards others. Aerith oftentimes gets Cloud out of his comfort zone by getting him to do some outrageous stuff you wouldn't think he'd normally do. The voice acting in this game was fantastic, but the standout performance for me was definitely Brianna White as Aerith. And the cool thing is, she's actually a YouTube gamer slash Twitch streamer herself. Um, those of you, some of you may know her as uh, the Strange Rebel Gaming. So I can't imagine what it's like for her to be a part of something so influential as, as Final Fantasy. She should be proud. She did a great job and I hope this leads to more great opportunities for her in the future as far as uh, voice acting goes. While at the same time, she continues doing what she loves, uh, also loves doing, which is playing video games and streaming them.
Look, I'm involved in things. Dangerous things. Oh, I'm sure you are. <laughs> that moment will go down in the history of my life as one of the most divinely beautiful moments I have ever experienced. If you've heard me talk about my experiences in the game before, you know that this was my first big voiceover role, and I didn't think I had any idea what I was doing. I had so much imposter syndrome. I thought for sure they had gotten the wrong person and that I was absolutely going to mess it up. Um, so to finally hear my voice in the game, in the completed game, and to be the player in this game was just ridiculously cool. So gratifying and it just meant the world to me. It still does. So to anyone who, gosh, this is gonna get cheesy, but bear with me. To anybody who's wondering if they should follow their dreams, oh my gosh, just do it. Because I didn't think I would ever be here. I really didn't. And even when I got here, even when I got cast, I thought, mm, this is a mistake, I don't belong here. But I did, and you do, and I could, and you can. I truly believe that, that if I can do it, <laughs> you can. There is a path for you. And if you follow your passion, and yes, there's lots of other things involved, like working hard and having good luck and right place, right time, that's all true. But it all starts with believing in yourself and following your passion and taking that where it leads. And by the way, regardless of who you ship Cloud with, whether it be Tifa or Era, but but uh, both, both shippings, in my opinion, are legit, just for different reasons. A lot of people love Aerith, just like a lot of people love Tifa. Both are extremely popular characters, even outside of the Final Fantasy VII uh, community. With that said, you do have some people who, who dislike Aerith's character for whatever reason. But even Tifa has her fair share of haters as well. Every popular fictional character has their anti-fans. That's why I don't get, I don't let it, uh, let it bother me. It is what it is. Still, still doesn't change the fact that Aerith is regarded by many gaming fans and critics alike as one of the most iconic female characters in gaming history. She may also be the, the third funniest character in the game behind, behind John, Johnny and Barrett. While I may, uh, uh, I may prefer one character over the other, you know, between Tifa and Aerith, I love both of these characters. I really do adore T Aerith's character, and I'd fuck anyone up who disrespect her. Though she, though she may be, not be Tifa, I'm pretty sure she can kick her fair share amount of asses as well. You love her or hate her, Tifa is undoubtedly one of the most iconic characters, not only in Final Fantasy, but in video games, period, as her various appearances in several titles will attest. So it's no wonder that of the many questions popping up in the wake of the State of Play remake teaser, one that stood out was... Where retardation is Tifa! Knowing that we can expect to see more from Square Enix in June, we're convinced that they're saving Tifa's big reveal for then. This begs the question... How is she going to look?
Look how good she fights! Oh my god! I love that design so much. Bro, she looks so good. How? How? Bro, she's a freaking wifey, dude. I love her, dude. She looks better than any of us could have ever imagined. Right. Not even her average children freaking... I, I can't. I'm going to cosplay Aerith and Tifa. I can't pick one over the other. Well, that's confirmed. Oh, oh, she looks good! Marlene! Oh, she looks fucking updated and good! Yeah, what's happening? You get to have a drink with her! <laughs> you haven't seen her fight yet. Here it comes. Brawler. Yeah, that's what I said. Here it comes. Yeah, give us Tifa gameplay, that's, that's please. It, that's it. Oh, fuck yes, dude! Fuck yes, let's go! Oh yeah, this is actually right up the main. Lord, dude, look at this fucking game! Dude, Tifa, Tifa is, I honestly think she's fucking perfect. Like, she looks great. She looks good. Tifa gameplay? Oh, she's dope! Give me some brawlers! I love it. Oh, this is when they... Oh, this is when the, the freaking Don sent them down to the sewers! Oh, this is sick! I think she looks awesome! I love that new design. I like the black outline with the white shirt and the suspenders. It's very, you know, reminiscent of the original design, but with a nice modern update. There's the boss fight battle for the sewers. Oh, this looks so good. Woo! Oh my god, we can dolphin kick people. I cannot wait to dolphin kick people. Dolphin punch, what is it? Wait is over, and Square Enix has finally given us quite the stunning look at Miss Lockhart. And holy crap, she's friggin' amazing. I cannot wait to play this game. Contrary to what fan art might tell you, this Tifa's proportions are exactly what we should have expected, given her past designs. Then you have Tifa, T Tifa Lockhart. Oh, Tifa. Thanks to the remake, I absolutely love her. I love Aerith, but I think I may love Tifa even more. In fact, she may have become my favorite Final Fantasy uh, character at the moment. Just like a lot of people assumed Aerith is the opposite of who she really is due to her appearance, the same thing goes for Tifa. Ever since the, the 1997 release of uh, FF7, Tifa has become a sex symbol thanks to her uh, physical features. She's considered one of the most beautiful video game characters um, of all time and a childhood crush for a lot of boys who grew up on, on the game. Because of all of this, as well as a, a shit ton of raunchy 
fan art of her plastered all over the internet for years, it's easy for someone to, uh, to assume she's flirt, flirty and super confident. But no, 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 that's not the case at all. In fact, while decept de de deceptively strong, Tifa is quite uh, ep epathetic and emo emotionally shy. While identifying and responding to the feelings of others, Tifa does not express her feelings very often. And uh, when she does, she struggles doing so. While Arif, uh, on the other hand, has no problem expressing her feelings and can be very blunt. Tifa has motherly qualities, uh, acting as a, as a support for others and keeping others around her optimistic. However, she's quite confident in her fighting abilities, and after seeing the shit she pulls off in this game, she, she's got every right to be. I actually prefer playing her over Cloud, to be honest. She's the only one, uh, only one among your party who actually uses her fist and feet to fight, and her attacks tend to hit the hardest. Tifa's a beast. And thanks, thanks to uh, all her martial uh, arts attacks and abilities, she's the most fun to play with. That's why uh, I got it set up to, uh, to immediately play as her whenever she's in my party. It's interesting to note that while Aerith is the one who needs a lot of physical support, Tifa's the one who needs emotional support, as she ten tends to be very uh, to be unsure of herself when it comes to making really hard decisions, which I myself can totally relate to. But when it comes to pe to the to the people that she cares about, she never hesitates doing all she can to help and protect them. Hell, there's plenty of times in the story where she's saving Cloud's ass. In the remake, because of Tifa's fighting background, the devs wanted to uh, make make this version of Tifa more athletic looking, so they gave her abs. Noise. This girl, what she look like? Well, she's in great shape. Is that really important? Wait a minute. You talking about Tifa? Well, well. What do we have here? I can see your summoner likes to train to be the very best. Me? Your physique. Slender yet toned. And that perfectly balanced symmetry. I can tell from a glance that you learn from the best there is. As you can see, I have a uh... A bunch of a bunch of Tifa uh, poster slash prints plastered over my wall, as well as you know other characters as well. But you'll notice a lot of Tifas in here. Mm. Mm -hmm.
So I even got some, uh, as you can see, some figurines and statues uh, along with them. Even polygon figurines. And that statue being, uh, being made by uh, Exquisite Studios, my very first Tifa statue I got, I got delivered. Now I do own more figurines, but uh, I'll show you uh, more at a, uh, a later time, but uh, yeah. You know how when you're, you're on YouTube or Google and you are typing something in in the search uh, search section and, and it uh, predicts the rest of the word you're typing? Well, the term for that is uh, auto autocomplete. And for some reason, the autocomplete is off for Tifa. When you try to type in uh, her name, it doesn't work. And it's been like that since uh, uh, 2019, specifically after... Um, after the Tifa uh, remake design was revealed back at uh, E3 that year. And I know it wasn't wasn't the case prior to that. If I had to make a guess as to why this happened, why this happened, it's probably due to the to the controversy that was going on with the uh, at the time with the whole Tifa's boob being getting nerfed thing. I do remember that Tifa was such a huge topic on a lot of uh, YouTube videos, so I'm sh I'm sure that has something to do with her name being disabled in the autocomplete feature. Now, obviously, you can still type in her name and get videos featuring her to pop up, but you won't automatically have her name filled out in the uh, sec uh, in the search section as you're typing it. Here's YouTube. Okay, you type Tifa. Lockhart to see autocomplete doesn't happen now the odd thing is if you actually do the search a whole bunch of Tifa videos pop up um, and of course the first thing that comes up is the Final Fantasy reveal I'm not sure what because you've got you know Tifa censored by YouTube all this stuff like they're not stifling criticism you know censoring Tifa they're not stifling criticism with this they're just turning off the auto complete for some weird reason and it's only tifa okay it's only tifa i tried Aerith, and Aerith auto completes you see we get the the pop-up it's weird the first thing that comes up not her full name cloud strife he comes up you know but tifa does it nothing <laughs> i got tiffany pollard you know nothing like they've disabled it is that because you were getting like a whole bunch of like Tifa Lockhart boobs, Tifa, Tifa Lockhart tits, like all that stuff? Is is that what we were getting? It's very, very strange. When I was checking to see if the problem was just YouTube or whether it was Google in general, which it's not, Tifa Lockhart auto-completes in a Google search bar. 
Remake comes a design that is obviously the design of old, but modified probably more extensively than it has ever been in the past. Practicality seems to be the basis of this new look, with her skirt now featuring pleated segments to make her martial arts delivery seamless. She wears black shorts underneath with black metal plated leather gloves. The elbow pad on her arm has been replaced by a red and black leather van brace. Her legs are notably not as on display as in the past, as she wears long length black leggings, and alongside these, she wears a sports bra. It's unbelievable how much rage this actually caused online but that's the internet for you stop the world i want to get off yes tifa's boobs something that has been a ire of controversy amongst people nowadays after seeing final fantasy 7 remake and people have uh, freaked out a little bit because tifa's knockers are not massively giants yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm actually gonna gonna talk about the whole Tifa, Tifa boobs getting nerfed controversy. So even though the big reveal of Tifa in the FF7 remake at the uh, E3 2019 uh, did indeed receive mostly positive responses from fans and critics alike, there were some who weren't so happy with with Tifa uh, Tifa's remake design at the time. In fact. There were uh, there would be there would be blogs and even uh, videos of people discussing their frustrations over it. Some of those complaints were about her new attire. Some of them was about her looking uh, look looking too skinny and not and not athletic enough since she's a martial artist. While most of the complaint was actually for, uh, focused on her breast being nerfed, or in other words small or at least much smaller than before some of those same people were uh, accusing square enix of uh, simply pandering to the sjw's by unnecessarily censoring uh, tifa now if i'm being perfectly honest here i thought the whole controversy was stupid and keep in mind the fact that at the time i didn't even really have any real attachment to tifa or any of these other characters for that matter so i wasn't being biased for feeling that way and funny enough i still feel that way today having played the game and knowing what i know about tifa now has made me see how how incredibly stupid and pointless the whole argument was was then i did uh, back then for multi uh for, for multiple reasons the fact that people were actually bitching about something so shallow as as the size of a of a of a video game character's breast seems so ridiculous to me and i still feel that way anyways to add more reasons as to why this whole thing was uh, ridiculous people were comp co uh, were comparing comparing her boobs in remake to her boobs in those cg cg cutscenes in uh, uh in the 1997 game where the graphics were were still trying to, to develop human characters and look less like lego blocks <laughs> and when you compare her model in those cutscenes to, to how she how she really looks in the concept art drawn by T tesora uh, namora you'll you'll notice that her breast even back then don't look near, nearly as huge as they did in those CG cutscenes. Besides, it's not like her boobs in the remake aren't big anyways. This version of Tifa has, has a black sports bra underneath her crop top, which helps support her. And those who and those who have actually played the remake and seen her in other outfits that don't have her wearing the sports bra know for a fact that she ain't no she she ain't rocking no A or B cups. <laughs> if if her knockers are nerfed, then Hojo is one handsome looking and, and pure hearted son of a bitch. Tetsuya Nomura explained that he was asked to tighten Tifa's breasts so they don't flop around in battle by an internal ethics team that appears to be located in Wokeland, California.
This ethics team is in charge of making sure the game releases with the proper age rating in all territories. And their main reasoning behind restricting Tifa's breast physics came from a desire to make the game more realistic. True enough, sports bras help a great deal to support bouncing bosoms in battle. It's a practical outfit that still looks totally sexy. Yes, so yes, technically, yeah, she was censored to a degree, thanks to a... Uh thanks to the ethics department and some some have argued you know have argued that well there's other that there's more things than just tifa's boobs that that they they, they should have uh you know touched upon you know but look i honestly i really don't care if i'm being honest with you about the whole what what their reasoning for giving her a new outfit and 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 the the and the and her boobs being the way they are i don't care uh, to be honest with you, I, I'm the only reason why I'm even bringing this up is because I know somebody in the comments was was going to bring it up, and I felt like, well, yeah, it's a thing. The ethics department is the reason why you know Tifa for the reason for Tifa's you know costume design and and her uh, and her boobs being the way they are. Um, I know for some people it matters. It matters to they, to them. Honestly, it doesn't to me. Honestly. I, I feel like you know you know I'm 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 actually cool with her her new attire. I love the the addition of her uh, her new gauntlets and her gloves and everything. And I'm actually fond of her and of her of her stock her leg stockings and stuff like that. So from an aesthetic point of view, I actually think it it, it looks good. Even including like the the black sports bra, I, I I like I think it looks good on her. That's just me. I I think. Her new clothes is a plus, is a is a nice change change for her. And from a from a practical sense, I think it may you know it makes sense to me, you know. But uh for those of you you know, I know there's those of you that don't probably don't agree, but you know, is it is what it is, you know. You feel you're more than free to feel whatever you feel about it. But me, honestly, like I said, I'm I'm cool with it. I actually prefer her new outfit over her old one, you know, but like I said, that's just me. Now, with that said, I will, I, I will say, though, like, um, as far as like, uh, character designs go, my favorite one will always be the, the, the one from in Descendia NT. Now, now, like I said, even though I, 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 I actually think that the remakes tifa is absolutely gorgeous i personally think that that um that the uh decenia and is prettier and she, uh just her overall look is just m more faithful to to the uh to Tets tetsuro nomura's uh, uh concept art d uh, design back in 1997 you know few comments here and there talking about how tifa has been censored and realistically speaking, if she's been censored, that happened quite some time ago. Because if you look at her original um, Final Fantasy VII design, her breasts aren't that huge. Because the censored aspect is coming from people saying that her breast size has been reduced. But that happened initially with her you know, original char character model, which you can see here. Yeah, yeah. So her, her breast size was pretty huge when it came to her character model. Her breasts are pretty huge for her character model. However, if you look at any of her designs, her designs for Final Fantasy VII itself, her cleaned up, updated design for the city of the first one. This is for Crisis Core. This is an Advent Children, and this is a new one. Her body is relatively consistent. The only thing is that her like waist area seems thinner in uh, the updated version of. Final Fantasy VII, the Final Fantasy VII Remake. But in terms of her breast size actually being reduced, like, that has been a thing since this original <laughs> 3D character model design. You can even see that, you know, again, looking at the Final Fantasy uh, fandom wiki. Other fan art exaggerated her breast size, so it might be a case that people are just so used to seeing fan art that they've kind of forgotten what her original design actually looks like, which, you know, again, is this. And then cleaned up, more modernized is this. So 
they, they're associating the large breast fan art with her original design when she was never actually like that, perhaps. But yeah, like overall, Tifa's design has been relatively consistent. Her and being a man that likes all shapes and sizes of breasts, I have to say, I think Tifa is pretty smoking, as you can see here on on the screen. I think Tifa is pretty hot, but. What makes me wonder, one of the things that makes me wonder, probably more than anything else, is this is what people have to base off of. This is, this is Tifa's boobs. Now, I wonder, wonder, people, you know, is this what we masturbated to as kids? I don't know. Like, the chest size was also reflective of the times. And the graphics we were provided with, I almost feel like, and I doubt this is the reason, but if you remember Cloud's basically two triangles walking around? Yes. And Barrett's just a bunch of boxes? Yeah. And Tifa's just two big circles. Right. Which, once translated into CG, was it's, just a giant chest. It's just two big circles. <laughs> I mean, he's not just wrong. They're pretty, they're, they're pretty damn massive. And yeah, I mean, just, here's a great shot of it right here. That was just <laughs> graphics back in the day, a great you know? Shot. Oh, yeah. The concept of the remake, so what was apparently stated is that being a martial arts fighter, she would be more athletic, she was yeah. slender, really um, and they would like those to be kind of down. Now, from what I've seen, they, it's not like she went from like these no. massive G size to A. It looks like she just went from like G to C. She's not flat chested, you guys. Like, like, they didn't shrink her to nothing, and she's like, oh, she, now she's flat chested. Guess what? If any woman has that size of the, a goddamn the, the bust, game, the original, they will have yeah. they will have problems with their back. Like it, it yeah. doesn't fucking matter what what you do in life. If you just if you're a monk like she is. Yep. And if, if you're super athletic, you will have problems with your back. So this is more realistic, in my opinion. No, and, and I agree. And even if our tits were indeed smaller than, than before, so the fuck what? She's still gorgeous as hell. And her character design, while different, is definitely faithful to her uh, classic design. I just see it as a, as a modern take on the character. If I hadn't ma uh, made it obvious at this point... Tifa Lockhart as a character means so much more to me than just another pretty face with a voluptuous body. Unfortunately, a part of Tifa's popularity will always be due to, due to her, her boob size. Some just look at her as a, as a sex object. However, there are, there are others like me who appreciate the character for much more than, uh, than that. Her personality, her story, and combat abilities are what intrigued me about the character. That's why I love collecting figurines and, and fa fan art of her so much. For me, her physical appearance is just a bonus. Although it could be argued that Aerith is FF7's most important character in terms of the main plot and its lore, and honestly, I swear to agree with that, but you can't deny that Tifa is very crucial to the, to the story as well, especially to Cloud's character arc. As far as I'm concerned, both Aerith and Tifa are, are the main uh, heroines in their own way. I love both of them, but honestly, I'll always have a stronger love for Tifa Lockhart no matter what.
to Walmart, the pleasure capital of Midgar that's got everything for everybody. Couple, huh? It's all good. Play together, do your own thing, earn a little stretch on the side even. Whatever you're into, we got you. Got a special one-time limited offer. No, thank you. Come on, Cloud. Let's go. There's so many great moments in this game, whether they were funny, sad, or just straight up badass. Probably my favorite part of the game is going through Wall Market and all the zany adventures you have while trying to save Tifa from Don Cornel. Seeing Cloud dancing with Andrea, then seeing both Aerith and Tifa's reaction towards seeing Cloud in a dress was hilarious, especially Chadley's reaction. <laughs> So going into this game, we knew there were going to be uh, changes, new stuff added to, to the story, and most of the new stuff acted as uh, expansions to pre-existing things from the original game, like like giving Jesse a, a backstory and having a chapter where Cloud does a mission with Biggs, Wes, uh, Wedge, and, and Jesse, giving them way more screen time than they did in the original game. It was during this mission where... Uh, where we encounter a completely new character named Roche, a renegade soldier, soldier third class. Despite being a crazy bastard who served as an antagonist, he possesses a sense of honor, restoring Cloud's health so they can have a fair one-on-one -on -one fight. The dude turned out to be, to, to, uh, to, to be both a cool character and a cool boss. Technically, I fought him twice, for the, the first time while riding a, a motorcycle and the second time on foot. I did felt Roche was a little bit unutilized in the sense that he could have uh, he could have um, he could have been used more for the story. That's why it felt odd to me that we didn't see him in later chapters. With that said, it's with that said, it's po very possible he'll appear in a future game since he still craves for a rematch with Cloud. With what we got of him so far, I'm very impressed and interested with in what the, the the devs have planned for this for his character. Going back to Biggs and Wes and Jesse, I gotta say that the time we shared with this trio made me sort of attached to each of them, which made it so damn hard to see them all die. Well, sort of. We'll get to that later. 
Jesse's death scene was definitely the toughest. I mean, I knew it was going to... I, w- I knew it was going to happen because of my prior knowledge of the original story, but it was still painful to watch my girl draw her last breath. Of course, the scene where Barrett's both enraged and saddened over the loss of his friends and possibly his daughter, Malene, to the point he breaks down crying while punching some rubble was heartbreaking. And, and having the track a broken world playing in the bra- in the background just made the scene even sadder. Then in that same scene, you'll see Tifa filled with so much anger as her fists are shaking. While she's obviously angry with Shinra for dropping the Sector 7 plate to crush the slums, she also blames herself and the rest of Avalanche, realizing that it was their 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 actions against Shinra or, or what provoked the company to do something so evil. After all, Shinra only did this to get rid of these uh, eco terrorists, then blame the incident on them. Despite this, Barrett sh- sh- tries to convince himself that this is all Shinra's fault, so he grabs Tifa's hands and tells her to hold on to that anger and use it as motivation to crush Shinra once and for all, and proceeds to hug her. Aside from the gameplay, it's moments like these that really made me love this game so much. The voice performance and the tone were well executed in that scene, and 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 I'd say the same thing about the rest of the game. This game knew how to make you feel all sorts of emotions, whether you're trying to, whether it's trying to be lighthearted with moments like the Honey Bee Inn, or downright, downright dark like uh, with scenes like this.
Now, it's time for me to discuss the most controversial thing in the uh, FF7 remake. It's ending. Up to uh, up to this point, about 90% of the, the game, in terms of the main story, was being a, uh, a faithful retelling to the source material. As I, as I said before, most of the changes or new stuff that were introduced were mainly uh, expansions or, uh, and adding more context to certain plot points from the, uh, from, the, from the OG story, like the scenes of Aerith walking to, to Seventh Heaven to, get, to go get uh, Marlene, only for Aerith to give herself, uh, give herself up to Shinra for Marlene's safety. We didn't see that in the OG game, but it, but it was mentioned that it, that it happened. And I'm so glad that the remake chose to, chose to include it because I absolutely loved that whole scenario. So for the most part, this was a remake. Until the last chapter, that, that is. Throughout the entire game, we kept seeing more and more of Sephiroth, or at least an illusion of him, as he kept haunting Cloud. Then we saw him again in the Shinra building, but this time, everyone else could see him, not just Cloud. Hell, we even see him kill President Shinra with his long-ass blade. Now, that part did also happen in the OG game, but but we didn't actually see that happen, because by the time Cloud and, and company made it to the room, the President was already dead, and Sephiroth's uh, sword was attached to his corpse. Also... We, uh, we constantly uh, run into these whispers, or what Mas um, Maximilian uh, Dude uh, would call plot ghost, interfering with the main uh, characters throughout various uh, uh, situations. It isn't until the near end when we get some um, exposition from uh, Red 13 when we finally find out what they are and what their, pur or what their uh, purpose is. They're, they're there to enforce the course of destiny. They're, they appear in large gatherings whenever events stray far, uh, too far from fate's intended path. So, so by the end of the game, we defeat the Whispers once and for all, then actually have a boss fight against Sephiroth. I'm not going to lie, in my first playthrough of this, I was completely confused with what the hell was going on. And it was only after watching multiple videos explaining explaining the ending that I sort of have a better understanding now, but, but it still leaves me with mixed feelings. The whole time, Aerith and Sephiroth started, started giving us a super cryptic dialogue, and we were fighting the Whispers, who were morphed into something that looked like a giant Heartless, and even more weird shit, even more weird shit. Uh, uh, continue to happen, I kept saying to myself, this has Namora written all over it. And yes, even uh, I'm aware that even though he was director, he wasn't necessarily in charge of all the uh, story decisions. The boss fights were uh, were awesome, and listening to, the, uh, to this game's version of One Winged Angel was fucking fantastic. It still made me be, uh, made me, uh, feel a bit off with what was going on this started feeling less like what 90 percent of the game was and more like uh more like kingdom hearts and i say that as a huge kingdom hearts fan The fact that Sephiroth is so determined to change fate seems to strongly imply that somehow he knows of the events from the OG timeline, including his, de his defeat, which would explain why he wants to defy destiny. There's so many theories going around that this is either a Sephiroth of this timeline that somehow managed to know of potential future plant events, or that this is indeed the post-Advent Children Sephiroth who found a way to travel back in, in time to change things. Either way, making this game connected to the original Final Fantasy game as well as the rest of its uh, compilation makes this remake both a reboot and a sequel. According to some info from the uh, official 
Japanese Ultimania Guide regarding FF7 Remake, the theory of there being potentially more than one Sephiroth could very well be confirmed. Meaning, meaning that there's a Sephiroth of this timeline whose real body is currently residing inside a cocoon of Mako at the uh, northern cr uh, cr cave inside the north, uh, north crater and much like in the OG timeline, controlling uh, Genova, as well as his clones to, to take on a form of, his, of himself to act out his plans. Meanwhile, there's a time-traveling Sephiroth who's trying to change the timeline to work in his favor. Whether these two Sephiroths are working together or acting separately on their own plans, it's currently unknown. Still, the possibility of Cloud and, and friends having to deal with multiple Sephiroths, especially one who's aware of previous events that led to his earlier losses, it's scary. Like I said before, there could be a time-traveling Sephiroth or a Sephiroth that some, somehow knows things that he shouldn't yet, possibly due to the live stream, which seems the, uh, to be the most likely. The same way how Aerith seems to know things, which would make sense since she is a Cetra due to her connection to the livestream. Not sure if I'm a fan of the, of the, of the whole time traveling uh, Sephiroth concept myself. Again, one of the uh, the devs in the uh, Ultimania said that, um, did state that we are dealing with multiple Sephiroths here. And I'm not just talking about Genova Roth or many of Sephiroth's clones. And going back to the live stream thing, we know that Sephiroth can still exist and still do stuff while he's there. He's probably doing, uh, going about things in the same or di different method as Aerith. One thing is for certain, it definitely involves the live stream since both have, both characters have a strong connection to it. Though I think Aerith's connection is a bit stronger than Sephiroth's since she's a Cetra. But there's, but there's probably a, a certain things that Sephiroth can do that Aerith can't, and vice versa. Well, well regardless of whatever explanation the, the devs come up with for, for future parts, uh, I just know that it, it's, it, it's been something that people ha has got us clamoring for, for, for months since the game came out. People theorizing and such and such. Uh, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. And um, I'm looking forward to it. And like I said before, uh, just the idea that there's more Sephiroths roaming around just adds more layer of, of danger to the, to the whole thing. And I'm really, and it may, if anything, it just makes Sephiroth that much more of a dangerous threat than he already was in the, pre, in, in, in the, previous, uh, in the previous games. The whispers appear whenever events start to diverge from the plot of the original Final Fantasy VII. So this has led uh, this has had uh, led some to speculate that, in a meta way, they're best they're basically the F FF Seven purist who want who wanted to make this uh, remake to be a one one for one remaster of the story they love, and by having Cloud and company defeating them was the devs way of saying that going forward they're going to tell the story of FF7 in a new and unexpected way than before whether whether or not this is you know this is true or not i don't know like i said this is just speculation on a lot of people's part you know it could be who knows really at this point um 
some key events might still might still happen, but not in the same way or exact order you rem you you remember from the OG. And themes of this alternate story may be different different as well. Again, who knows? Again, just all speculations. And if it is, I don't think the the devs are painting those fans as uh, necessarily evil since the whispers themselves were never really portrayed as such. Think of all the time times they appeared throughout the game. Whenever a big event was about to happen that didn't happen in the original game, the whispers showed up to try to correct things regardless of if it favors the the protagonist or the anti or the antagonist, making them a neutral force in the story. Like for example, stopping Cloud from k killing Reno in the uh, in the in the church, cause th that never happened in the in the original. And future events in the story needs uh, need Re Reno to be alive, saving saving Era fr from falling down the stairs, which could have potentially severely injure or even kill her way too early in the story. Stop Hojo from spilling the beans too early on Cloud's true past involving Shinra, or even Barrett dying at the hands of Sephiroth, because again, that never happened, and Barrett, Barrett isn't fated to die. But now that the, the Whispers are gone, thanks to us, the players, that means all bets are off, and, and no character is safe from Death's Doors, meaning that a character who didn't die in the OG timeline could potentially die in this new FF7 retelling. Eris speech at, uh, freedom speech at the at the end at the end could be interpreted in a meta sense that the dev that the devs are free to do what they want now. They're no longer limited to tell the story in a faithful reimagining re reimagining like they like this they did with uh like like they like they did with this game. That's why I don't think I don't think calling this game a remake was necessarily. Uh, false advertising on Square's part. In fact, since I, I finished the game, I've been looking at the title in a different light. It's still remake, but in a but not in a traditional sense. Instead, it means Square has remade the FF7 timeline. Th that's why I think Part One, one w uh, wasn't attached to to the title in the first place. And going forward, any future games in this series won't be called remake. So no, so no part two or part three. We might, we might get an entirely different title, like, like Final Fantasy VII Reunion or Rebirth. Now, due to uh, to, to us changing fate, Zach's Zach Fair is uh is alive somehow, including Biggs, WTF? Oh, and by the way. Earlier, it was revealed that uh, Wedge had, in, had had somehow survived Sector Seven, the, the Sector Seven plate uh, collapse incident, despite the fact that in the OG game he he did he had died along with his two Avalanche buddies, Biggs and Jesse. But in Chapter Seventeen, the Whispers attack Wedge when he tried to uh, try to help Barrett's group group in the uh, in the Shinra building, though not directly shown. It's implied that the whispers threw him out the window of the building as uh, the sound of shattered glass is the last thing heard when the screen fades, fades, possibly killing him. If this is the case, then why even bother keeping him alive only to, to kill him in a, in a few chapters later when he didn't really do anything of importance to the story between these five chapters? The writers should have just kept him dead during the whole plate cl collapse incident, much like in the OG OG game did. And to make things worse, not only is Biggs alive, but the ending seemed to imply that Jesse might have survived as well by having Jesse's glove and presumably her bandana on the desk besides uh, besides a, a bed besides a bed with a unconscious Biggs. Then again, this could just be something given to Biggs. To keep as a as a way of remembering her since she was his comrade. Honestly, I hope this is the case. Otherwise, this would lessen the impact of chapter 12 in a big way, even though it kinda already has.
I understand why there's a lot of FF7 fans who weren't happy with this game's uh, ending, nor its implication for its future parts. A lot of people were just hoping for a faithful adaptation of the game they loved. That's why uh, uh, there's not a doubt in my mind that Namora and the rest of the creative team were coming up with the concept of the whispers and how they were going to end the game, that they knew that this was going to displace some fans. They had to know. But they still ch chose to go along with their decision, even though this decision was going to piss off some, piss some people off and leave them disappointed. Now, in an interview, uh, one of the devs did say that the remaining parts going forward will be a, for a more faithful uh, resp representation of the, the rest of the story. But I feel like that was just PR talk, because according to an interview uh, that, uh, with Namora, that might not be the case at all, so I'm not I'm not sure. I like to think that we'll be getting a lot of the same key events, but just under different contexts. But we'll just gonna have to wait and see. I choose to be a bit more optimistic and excited with the decision Square is taking the FF7 story in terms of telling it in a fresh new way. I kind of see it in a similar fashion as say the Fate Stay Night visual novel and how, how its premise was told in different versions. The Fate Route, the Unlimited Blade Works Route, and the Heaven Feels Route. Each have their own timelines, themes, and narratives differing from one another. And this could be the very same thing by starting off this new version of FF7 as a remake, then becoming something very different. For FF7, this is a different route but told through how many parts Square, Square plans to uh, plans to tell this new story. Now, with that said, I still have my concerns, especially now that the devs have decided to bring certain characters back to life and what they intend on doing with them. Now, now if this was uh, a year ago, I would have told you that my biggest concern was that Tita Namoro being hugely involved in this. The reason I say that is because he's also the director of the Kingdom Hearts franchise. As much as a Kingdom Heart, as much as Kingdom Hearts has had a, a lot of charm to it, I and I, and I really do love that series. The more stellar storytelling isn't the easiest to follow due to how convoluted it can be. Don't get me wrong; he's done a lot of great things for Square Enix, creative wise. But he's all. But he does have a habit of going a bit overboard. That's why. I, that's why it's difficult at trying to explain the lore of KH to a newcomer without confusing them. And because of that, Namora's way of still uh, telling a story isn't everyone's cup of tea. Now, allow me to clarify something before I get people commenting. Um, Namora wasn't was was not uh, wasn't in charge of the story decisions. Damn, you wasted a lot a lot of that a lot of that time blaming Namora. He didn't even write it. Don't even compare this to K Kingdom Hearts. Well, here's the thing. I'm not bashing Namora. I don't hate Namora. I totally respect the man and all, all he's done throughout the years. Like I said, I love Kingdom Hearts and he's the brainchild of it. And I've played enough KH games to tell how Nomura likes to tell his stories in his games. And while I never said this was solely his doing, he definitely played a part in this. It's just that fighting the harbor harbiters of fate, their designs looking like a heartless, gave me huge cage vibes there as well as uh, how, how crazy everything got at the end. Definitely felt more like a cage game than what the uh, the game was trying to be for most of it. You expect me to believe that he had absolutely nothing to do with this? Come on. And ye and yes, I'm aware that that Katsuzu uh, Najima was in, uh, in charge of the story and scenario for remake. Nomura still had some creative control behind this project, though. And even even and and even even if he didn't and ha had absolutely nothing to do with the ending of the game, you're still missing the point that a lot of people, including me, um, and, and felt that the, uh, the the ending just felt off. Now, I still love the game, and I have nothing against Namora or Najima. I just hope 
going forward that the storytelling don't get too crazy in future parts. But considering the people who are heavily involved in future parts, it might even get even crazier. Again, that's what I would have said a year, uh, a year, uh, a year ago if I hadn't learned that Namora stepped back as creative di uh, director and Nak Nakami Hakasuchi. Ha 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 uh, God, I hope I didn't butcher that name. I probably did, but anyways, he's now the director. With that said, Namora still is still involved in in, in this. Despite the mixed reception the game's ending has created, overall the game has been hugely uh, uh, praised. In Japan, it was the best-selling retail game during its uh, first year, uh, first week of uh, release, selling selling seven seven hundred seven hundred and two thousand eight hundred and fifty three physical copies in its uh, first weekend, with the game sold out in many stores. Worldwide, the game uh, had shipped and, sh and sold over three, uh, uh, three, three point five million copies within third three days, and five million um, by the by the end of uh, 2020. This made it this made it one of the biggest launches for a PlayStation 4 game and one of the fastest selling uh, PS4 exclusive in history, surpassing the launches sale the launch sales of two previous rec uh, record holders marvel's um marvel spider-man man which sold uh 3.3 uh, 3 million and god of war which uh sold 3.1 million final fantasy 7 remake was also one well the the top selling digital ps4 game on the playstation network in april 2020 at the game awards it won best rpg and best uh best score slash music it was also it also won uh ign uh japan's game of the year in 2020 despite the worries and concerns we have for the narrative of future parts it has been a a lot of fun watching and listening to multiple crazy theories and speculations for what's going to happen next as we all wait for game two or whatever the hell it's gonna gonna be called some of the craziest and most um most interesting being maximilian dudes by the way go watch uh spoiler mode with maximilian dude on e easy out uh, on easy allies uh youtube channel if you want to hear his uh theories honestly i i think we really needed this game with what's going on in the real world this pandemic we we needed something to get our our minds off uh, on so something more pleasant. I know I did. Playing this game has helped made made uh like the last year more bearable. Venturing through Midgar, collecting flowers with Aerith, blowing up reactors with Barrett, kicking tons of Shinra ass, and just chilling chilling in seventh seventh heaven with Tifa, as well as comforting her as if she was our childhood friend has helped has made me feel like a gamer again all the while listening to all the breathtaking musical score composed by the same people who did did the uh the original final fantasy 7 
Nabu ya, 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 Mutsu, along with uh, Mitsu, uh, Mit, Mitsu Sa, Sasuki, and other names I can't, can't really pronounce. By the way, I totally beat Sephiroth on my first try, and I, and I did it playing as, as Tifa, and I finished the fight with her limit break, Dolphin Flurry. Such a badass way to end the game, am I right? Until now, I've always been uh, watching cutscenes, but actually playing a Final Fantasy game is an, is an entirely different uh, experience, and I'm so glad I chose this, this to be my first. After playing this, I can't wait for game two, and I wouldn't mind playing some of the other Final Fantasy games, at least the ones that piqued my interest. It took me a week and a half to finish this game, and I hate that I did that, uh, that I did finish it because I enjoy playing it so much, and I want to I want I don't and I want to explore uh, with these with these characters I've I've grown attached to. I've replayed the game from start to finish to relive the joy I, I felt in my first playthrough. I still had a blast despite knowing, already knowing what's going to happen. During my second playthrough, I actually beat Sephiroth playing as Aerith, which would be a very cathartic feeling for anyone familiar with the OG FC, FF7 game story. Now, I guess you could say that I've be officially become a, a Final Fantasy fan. I'm sure there's more issues I, uh, I could have addressed towards this game. But this wasn't really a traditional video game review I'm sure some of you are used to. Instead, it was more of just me sharing my experience with you guys. So I'm interested in um, reading in the comment section, what's your first true Final Fantasy experience? Please share, you know. Um, but uh, that's it. That, uh, that, that concludes this whole thing. And um, uh, if, you enjoyed, if you enjoyed it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And, you know, for more videos coming soon, you know, I'll be doing more FF7 content and, you know, just nerdy stuff in general. So uh, with all that said, stay beast.